I am here with Kim Skinner, and we are going to take a look at some plaster samples. Uh, Kim, what do, you, what do you got? Let's take a look at that sample here first. We'll kind of zero in on that. Great. Okay, now what's going on there? We see the white spots, and we see kind of the graying in the background. Tell me a little bit about what's going on there. Okay, what we have done is taken a three and a half inch round core off of a pool that's approximately one year old. Uh, the white spots that you see formed within the first few months and, uh, and then the areas around it are slightly gray, grayer than what would be typically found in white plaster. The customer started to, to complain about it and so On Balance was called out, or Doug Latta um, from On Balance was called out to do an inspection and report. And so what we have decided to do is to take these cores that had a few spots within the middle and to uh, send them to various cement labs uh, across the country. In fact, we're going to send them to four different professional independent cement laboratories and have them perform a failure analysis. What they will do is use scanning electron microscopy uh, and do cross-section and to analyze the, why the spots are different than the surrounding areas and also address the overall grain, which would appear, which would appear more gray if, the, if this sample was underwater. It would, it would darken, and so there would be a much uh, brighter contrast between the white spots and the gray areas around it. All right, now, we talked a little bit earlier about um, kind of what you think is actually taking place here. Uh, would you mind sharing with us some of your ideas? Now, we'll, we'll have an official report coming, and so yes. we'll first qualify that this is not an official report, but this is kind of your hypothesis yes. that you're looking for the report to verify or disprove, correct? That's correct. Now, some in the industry would call these white spots spot etching. Uh, our experience, and, uh, and we've actually had this analyzed before, and professional cement laboratories have identified these white spots as soft spots. And um, and your question? Basic, was? Yeah, basically, uh, we have this report coming. Okay. Uh, and so tell us a little bit about what you think is actually taking place here. That's right, okay, I remember. What we believe is the, is the cause of these white spots forming is twofold. One is the darker area around it is gray. We believe that that is caused by the addition of calcium chloride to the plaster mix when they're mixing it and, uh, and the, in the application process. No, no, let's pause just a moment. On the uh, calcium chloride, um, I know that's an accelerator, but what, what is the purposes? Why do they put the calcium chloride in the plaster? Okay. Okay, the reason that plasters like to use calcium chloride is that it, ex it accelerates the hardening process of the plaster and allows them to finish a pool within three hours uh, or give or take. Uh, in the olden days when they did not use calcium chloride, it would take eight hours to finish a pool. So calcium chloride speeds up the hardening process. So calcium chloride isn't something that's required in the plastering process. It's something that's done for the convenience? For the convenience and, and to speed up the process so that, that plasters can perform their job quicker and to do more pools in one day. Okay, so the calcium chloride is causing the grain. And I interrupted you, so I'll let you go ahead and the, the white spots. Okay, so yes, the calcium chloride and, and hard troweling contributes to the grain, overall grain effect. The white spots, we believe, is a, is the, is a two-fold effect also. When they have to trowel a hardened plaster that's where, that they are getting behind in, it's hardening faster than they can get to it, they have to throw water onto the surface to try to, to make it workable again. And so then, the plaster, since the plaster surface is somewhat rough, as they trowel, they start disturbing some of the aggregate that's sticking above the surface, and they jiggle the aggregate. And by jiggling it, it creates a weakness point where water can penetrate. And, uh, and also calcium chloride causes micro-cracking. That's another defective issue with adding too much calcium chloride to the mix. So anyway, by disturbing the aggregate and jiggling it, it allows, uh, it, it creates a weakness. Water can penetrate. There are soluble compounds in cement that are usually below the surface that would not ordinarily be dissolved. But because of the micro-cracking and the jiggling effect, Water penetrates, dissolves the soluble compounds such as calcium hydroxide and also the calcium chloride that was added, 
it, it, they, it is dissolved, it is leached out of the surface or it weeps out of the surface um, because it's submerged in water and then as the calcium compounds are removed it creates a void or in other words a greater porosity. So as the areas lose calcium the porosity increases and then it turns white due to the result of porosity. Porosity is actually is very light colored and that's why the white then appears after a few months time passes. So those white spots that are appearing, the porosity, is it um, now a less dense, so maybe a softer area, eventually would have maybe um, more problems in those lighter spots? Or that what, is what's the long-term prognosis on yeah, this? Yeah, the porosity creates a weakness. It allows water to penetrate, and therefore porosity is, is, is weak. It is no longer dense, it is no longer compact, and therefore it allows water, even whether it's balanced or aggressive, to interact with the cement compounds and dissolve it. So in, there are a different term you could use is that these areas are deteriorating. Okay. And so therefore in time it weakens. These areas will actually eventually just be pitted uh, because it's deteriorating and water is just going to be, water that is the universal solvent is going to dissolve these areas and they're going to even be more pronounced and more rough in, as time passes. Therefore the surface will not last as long as it normally would, which is usually 20 years, this surface is going to decay and uh, probably need replastering in less than 10 years. Okay, now I've heard there's some controversy with this, that, that some uh, state that this is uh, chemically induced. Is, is, that, is that correct in my understanding? That is correct. There are, there are those in the, in the industry that believe that since these areas are somewhat pitted under a microscope, that they believe that the only reason that that could happen is through the unaggressive action by aggressive water. Um, and so that is why the term spot etching was uh, coined by plastering, the plastering industry, is that they believe the aggressive water somehow singularly attacked different spots on the surface. Uh, we contend that that is false, but that is one uh, contrary opinion that aggressive water would cause these spots uh, because of the loss of material that is uh, indicative inside if you were to look at it under a microscope. Well, that is really interesting, Kim. I look forward to seeing the report, and if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to maybe uh, get together with a, another audio interview um, after the report comes out. Uh, we would be glad to do that. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. All right.